Today it's time for a best of five series of top level StarCraft 2 and what I've got for you is a Zerg versus Protoss where in game number one we find ourselves on the map Submarine. And now already right from the get go there's something worth noting. Look at this. An Overlord at 13 supply? Absolutely ridiculous. Generally speaking on this map I would say like nine times out of ten recently uh, we've been seeing 12 pools but apparently our blue Zerg player here has other plans. He goes by the name of Raynor. Now, there's a couple of reasons as to why you want to go for a 12 pool. First off, Submarine has a very short rush distance. And secondly, your opponent can send out a probe very easily as well and just block your expansion here on the low ground. And that's exactly what the Red Protoss player is doing. Playing here in the opposite corner of the map with the Red Protoss pieces from the United States of America, we have Neeb. Alrighty. Oh, okay. There's already a little bit of tricking going on. Um, already a mind game. Okay, so... Radar sent down a drone early enough to make his opponent think that this was gonna be a hatchery first. Then he pretended to head on over to watch the third base instead. This overlord is scouting that the probe is still patrolling back and forth. But instead he decided to go for a spawning pool relatively early on. This is not a 12 pool. I think it was a 16 pool. Which... Uh, okay. I guess eventually will allow Raynor to take the natural expansion here. This is a little bit strange already. I kind of like this. This is one of those things that happens when the map is around for a little while. And while there's certainly something to be said for regular changes in the map pool, um, I kind of like this. I kind of like this. So now he sees indeed that that, uh, that drone that he, uh, that he blocked from taking a the natural there wasn't actually even intending on taking a natural in the first place. Already though, this kind of this kind of hinders the Zerg player quite a bit. One big advantage, I suppose, is that Neep, by seeing that his opponent didn't take the natural expansion, he decided to go for the Cyber Core pretty early on here. So, it's gonna, you know, delay the Nexus, obviously, but this should still be okay. He's gonna go ahead, finish this wall off right now with a second gateway, but this is odd. Um, you know what? I said he was gonna be okay, but I'm actually not entirely sure. There's still six Zerklings coming up, but they're delayed Zerklings compared to a 12 pool, but I think they should be able to potentially get some work done. Problem is, obviously, the Adept is gonna pop out here eventually. The Adept can shoot over the buildings, so unless the Zerklings manage to kill that gateway, um, this shouldn't deal too much damage. Yeah, okay. What a strange little game already. This only really happens at the highest level where both players are constantly trying to outsmart the, uh, or outsmart the opponent. I think Raynor may have actually hoped for the opponent to freak out just a little bit more, but Neep did not go for the Zealot. He didn't really go for anything. Just uh, a slight delay there on the Nexus, but nothing all too crazy. And obviously also the addition there of the second gate, but eh, you'll usually end up getting those here regardless. Follow-up from the Protoss player is going to be a Stargate. Nothing all too crazy. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, we do now see that Zerk. Third hatchery as well. So Raynor is just happily macroing up right now. Brenda over here, guarding the creep tumor. She pooped that out herself, okay? She's very proud of it. She's like a child. It's okay. We all love you very much, Brenda. You're only a couple minutes old. Well. <laughs> That's kind of sad, man. Alright, anyways. Uh, the creep tumor ended up getting sniped. But at the very least, there's one over here. Killing the Creep Tumor actually is very annoying. Now, this map is relatively relatively small. But obviously, keeping the Creep Tumors alive, even if you can get them across eventually, uh, is very, very helpful. Void Ray now is a follow-up. I mean, this is the gold standard, of course, in this particular matchup. I'm hoping to see a bit more variety as well throughout this series. Because honestly, like, I've seen so many Stargate openers recently. A lot of people reached out and said the series was awesome, by the way. So, I'm going to make the assumption that it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's no denying that... Oh, well, this is nice. No denying that this is nice. But there's no denying that ZVP has looked a little bit more plain recently. But I'm already liking this quite a bit. Adepts, though, are going to shade up. Well, Adept right now, singular. Still four drones here. Maybe even five? Uh, he's trying to pop them into gas. Yeah, five drones here is not bad for two Adepts. Especially since Adepts fall off a little bit. Now, it's helpful to keep them alive just so you can try and keep that, uh... The third base nice and defended. Oracle now is a follow-up, actually. So that kind of indicates to me that... Neep doesn't necessarily plan on sticking around on... Stargate units the entire match. Doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Well, I say that, yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Decides to flop down the second Stargate. Generally speaking, it seems to be Void Ray into Void Ray into Void Ray into two Void Rays into two Void Rays into more Void Rays into Void Rays, right? That seems to be the general gist of most of the Protoss builds right now. Um, this particular case, though, he decided to add on an Oracle as well, which I kind of like. It looks like the Queens were in position. It makes sense, actually. Yeah, we don't really see Void Ray into Oracle too often. 
But generally speaking, whatever Zerk scouts with the very first Overlord, right? Like, uh, we saw Raynor do here earlier. When they scout that it's gonna be a Void Ray first, oftentimes they will either skip or delay these Spore Crawlers. Now, Raynor apparently has played against this kind of shenanigans before. He's got two Spores in the main base and then also in the natural expansion, so he was anticipating that it could still be an Oracle as a follow-up. Uh, but yeah, I guess sometimes you can get a lot of damage done. Stasis Ward over here. It's gonna be popped by just one Zerkling. Good control here so far by the Italian Zerk. Alrighty, so... Lair here, taken pretty late actually. Standard time for the Lair seems to be about four and a half minutes. These top level Zerg players are real good, man. But usually you take this about four and a half minutes is when you start it. And this one probably started, I don't know, like five minutes or so. A little bit later. I guess Raynor uh, had to play a little bit of catch up there. Just add on a couple more drones. And I guess if you're not really intending on going for a big push, you don't really need that mobile detection. The Lair is not super critical. Curious to see, though, where he's going to take this from now. Is he going to go straight into the Roach Speed? Is he going to go into a Hydra Den? Lara's done right now. Hmm. Nothing really committed to uh, just yet. Okay, he's going he's gonna to go for the for the Roach Speed. I mean, it's a good all-round safe start. Now, this is kind of curious. Look at this. <laughs> so what happens on this map, oftentimes, is that Zerg either tries to push through this choke, right? Or they threaten to push through the choke, and then they move up towards this high ground over here. Now, the awkward part is, if you're fighting over here as a Protoss player, right? And you're trying to fight and force field units away from this choke point. Shield batteries that are behind the wall are not actually in range. So, I think that's what this guy is trying to solve. Speaking of pushes, by the way. Maybe it's gonna come into play here very shortly. Because, despite the fact that there's quite a lot of... Uh, quite a lot of uh, Void Rays available right now. Raynor seems to want to go for a push. Now, he's added on a lot of Queens. We're already gonna go up to 11 here, so this certainly this certainly means that the queens are gonna be coming across as well. I actually really like the names for all of these new builds, by the way. So in case you're unfamiliar, huh? yeah. okay. Well, I mean this could actually be a problem. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Killing these queens is very helpful, I think, for me. But he's losing a bunch of void rays in the process. And I don't really know exactly if it's worthwhile. Is this good? Trading queens for Void Rays? I'm, I'm thinking that this is not a good thing for... For the Protoss. I'm not entirely sure though. Anyways, so... We've had the German Taxi, right? Which is when you pop your queens into Dropper Lords. We've had the Warsaw Subway. Where you uh, pop them in a Nidus Worm instead. However, the most recent addition apparently is called the Soul Stroll. Where, uh... You just walk them across. And obviously, Seoul means, you know, it's a Korean version of it. It's their capital city. <laughs> the Seoul Stroll. <laughs> so we have the German Taxi, the Warsaw Subway, and the, and the Seoul Stroll. Anyways, Battery Overcharge right here being utilized to try and keep that Robo vicinity alive for a little while longer. Void Rays are trying to get some damage done here as well. Queens, though. Yeah, they're all the way around. You know what? I wasn't sure if I liked that that little bit of aggression there from Neep, but I guess he delayed the queens and he reduced their, you know, transfuse energy, and obviously he killed a bunch of them as well. I guess it makes this push less powerful from Raynor. Although if you keep them all alive, the Void Rays that is, this is much better, right? So I don't know why I didn't micro, uh, micro them a little bit more. Seems like he really wanted to commit there. Regardless, a lot more Zerg units are coming up. Raynor plans on ending this game right here, right now. He does not want to play a long macro game against Protoss at this point. He does have a fourth base. I love this, by the way. A couple zealots made their way towards the third base of the Zerg. That's going to force a couple of those reinforcements to turn around. Shield batteries are slowly starting to get picked off as well. Most of the Void Rays now are running low on hit points. You can see with that, Raynor obtains the victory. It's actually kind of fascinating. So, for the longest time, Zerg players used to prefer the bigger maps. Right? The maps with more bases, because when you think about it, Zerk is faster, Zerk is more mobile, and therefore they have, generally speaking, an easier time establishing big economies, especially because they tried to swarm the opponent, right? However, I've noticed over the last year or so that, well, not the last year or so, probably like the last two years or so, um, that a lot of Zerk players are now no longer vetoing the small maps, but they're actually starting to veto the largest maps in the map pool. The maps also have slowly gotten smaller over time, and... <laughs> There's something to be said for these small maps because of those pushes that you can do with the Queen, right? So the Queen, obviously, without a shadow of a doubt, the most well-rounded Zerg unit. 
right? Like, there's really no particular weakness to them. They fall off, I suppose, for a time in the mid-game, but they're very good in the early game. They're very good at defending the bases. They're very good at spreading creep. They're very good at keeping each other alive. They're very good at, you know, injecting bases, right? Let's not forget about that. And they're very good at tanking damage as well. So, generally speaking, right, since they have good anti-air in the early game as well, your alternative is going Hydras, but they require two upgrades. Generally speaking, the smaller maps allow you to use the Queens offensively. And I think that's one of the reasons why, why we do see this kind of shenanigans quite a lot more uh, right now in the current meta. Anyhow, let us see where this game is going to take us. So, Romanticite, also definitely a map where you can send the Queens across. I expect to see a couple more of those sort of builds from, uh, from Raynor. Last few times I've seen it on this map, they were all German uh, German taxis. So the German taxi, of course, it was uh, invented. <laughs> it was invent uh, invented by Lambo. The only problem with the German taxi on this particular map is that if you have a couple overlords, like for example in this dead space over here, you can't actually unload them. So usually what happens is the Void Rays are trying to chase down the overlords with the queens in them. Uh, we'll see if that happens here in a little bit, but... There's a couple locations here that can be a little bit tedious, like this whole area. Uh, Zerk just can, uh, simply can't unload, right? So there's a couple locations where it's difficult to actually keep those OVs alive. Regardless, this pesky little probe, man. Ugh. It's gonna play a ring around the Rosie here with the drone. <laughs> I love top level StarCraft, man. Like, those small moves, if you're, like, a, a low-level player, it would cost you all your actions per minute, and it would completely mess up your macro, but at this level, they don't even really care. Neep knows that he's not likely to get a drone kill, but maybe he can soften up the drone so this adept can one-shot it or something along those lines. It's really just a little bit of a skill check. Anyhow, Stargate once again as a follow-up, unsurprisingly. Now, the Twilight Council openers, or the Robo openers, didn't really get nerfed. I mean, I guess they got nerfed, like... The the, ro the the Immortal was made a little bit more expensive, but I think that's like a year and a half or so ago. I don't really know, it's been a long time. Uh, they didn't really get nerfed recently, it's just that Stargate Opener seemed to be better overall. So, Adept Timing Attacks, for example, still very, very potent. It's what we saw a lot last year, especially at the... I would say like in the first half of 2020, we saw a lot of those uh, Adept Timing Pushes. Zerg players have gotten much better, though, at defending those. So, yeah. Maybe that's one of the reasons as well. Well, uh, maybe that's one of the reasons as well why we don't really see a dead offer anymore. Um, but in case you're wondering, those builds are still very viable, and they can certainly still end the game. The thing is, I guess that the Stargate opener is just more well-rounded. So once again, it's going to be Void Ray straight into Oracle. I like it. Force out the spores. Is this really going to be a three minute and forty? Well, a three minutes and fifty seconds ish. Nexus? That is so early on. Imagine if there were like 12 Zerklings here available. I mean, there's seven of them. I do feel like Raynor may have been able to send those across, but... I guess you'd never really know exactly where those Adepts are, right? So this is a very, very quick third Nexus here. By the, uh, the Protoss player from the United States. Neep, of course, without a shadow of a doubt, the best player from the States. And has been for uh, a very, very long time. Okay. Now at this point, that third is safe, right? Even if you uh, go up against a lot of Zerklings right now, you should be able to just use the the Warpins. Oh, good control here, man. Who needs Spark Crawlers? Just get more Queens. When you think about it, Queens are kind of like mobile Spark Crawlers, right? <laughs> if you have two of them, they, uh, they're going to be able to protect a Mineral Line just fine, so... Spores, yeah, they're not really completely necessary. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe like one or two coming up here shortly, but generally speaking, it seems to be preferable to go for an extra queen in each of the bases rather than go for the spore. Well, that actually had potential. I actually do think that Oracle could have potentially gone in and killed a couple of drones. Spore crawlers don't count to be moved, right? Which I guess is the big thing. Anyways, there's the Evo Chamber. There's the Lair. This time around, it was a little bit sooner, so we'll see if this is going to be... A Dropper Lord style. Follow up right now though from Neeblet is a little bit different. So he's going to be going into the Twilight Council right now together with the Forge. Still does have the two Stargates though. Actually, did he make the Twilight Council at this time as well last game? It feels like everything has been sped up a little. Yeah. He's just getting everything out a little bit faster. I wasn't paying very close attention there to the follow-ups in the previous one, but it feels a little bit quicker.
Either way, getting the charge upgrade obviously is pretty much mandatory. With all of these Stargate-based builds, you're gonna get yourself a... A pretty healthy bank in minerals usually, right? So you can make a couple photon cannons, maybe a few shield batteries, a couple additional gateways, right? Create a wall off so banelings can't accidentally roll in. But you can also obviously warp in zealots to lower your mineral bank and to go for counterattack damage, which is what Neep was doing in that previous game as well. It's gonna actually be a Spire follow-up here from Raynor. Hmm. So I'm very hesitant when it comes to Spire follow-ups. Okay, let's talk about this for a little bit. So, a couple different ways in which Zerg can follow this up. First off, you can go for a push with the Queens, right? There's a couple different varieties like we over already covered, but push with the Queens, probably the best uh, all-round approach right now. Secondly, you can go for the Hydra Den. The problem is with the Hydra Den is that you, you kind of have to play macro from there. The natural transition from Hydralisks is to go into Lurkers. And when you go into Lurkers, you should go into Vipers as well. The problem with that is that you then basically give the Protoss the full go-ahead to do whatever they like. And Zerg late game is a little shaky right now. So Protoss players, generally speaking, feel more than comfortable just hanging out, going for... Uh, well, 15 Mutas. Going for that late game. Raynor, though, decides to go for a Spire and then into 15 Mutalisks against someone who's opening up a double Stargate. Now, there's a ton of gateways here as a follow-up. Noop is not going to commit to the Stargates for... You know, at least a little while longer. But these Mutas, they're actually a little bit crazy, though. So, the problem is, if there's already two Stargates out, Protoss can start chrono-boosting out two of those Phoenixes at once. And since Phoenixes can attack and move at the same time, they absolutely trash those Mutas, unless the Mutas show up all of a sudden uncontested. Technically speaking, there should be a lot of anti-air available right now for Neve, but the Void Rays are already gone. These Archons are not likely to actually get any damage in because the Mutas are way faster. And while he immediately starts Chrono Boosting out two of those Phoenixes at once, I wonder if there actually could just be a little bit too much aggression right now coming out of the Italian Zerg. This is completely like catching this Protoss player off guard. A lot of probes should start taking, uh, should start taking damage here as well. At the same time, by the way, we do have that Archon Bulk together with the Zealots moving across. Queens are going to be joined here by Hydralisks as well. Queens in the front once again. A lot of transfuse energy. At the same time, though, the Mutas are still going to town inside of the main base of the Protoss player. It looks like they're going to flippy flap away. The question is, does Raynor have enough to actually deal with all of these units? Because these Archons are going to be very difficult to break. You can't really pull drones against these either because the Archons obviously deal splash damage. Charge is done. There's going to be a lot more drones here. Uh, for, uh, or there's gonna be a lot more drone kills here, rather, for Neep. I think eventually there should probably be enough roaches, but... If he's gonna be forced to it inside of his own base, that's pretty bad. Mutas have decided to come on home. Drones actually evacuated over here to the 3 o'clock position. Mutas can't really fight all of these Archons, though, so I guess what you want to do is Corrosive Bile down the force fields and then continue onwards. If you can kill, I guess... The Prism? Things are gonna be okay? Okay, nice magic boxing here on the Mutas to keep them spread out as well. He wants to land Corrosive Balls. Now, once again, yeah, the Corrosive Balls are gonna have to go down on the Force Field to rot it in on the Prism. A lot of damage here is being done by Neep, but Neep didn't really deal critical amounts of damage yet. If Raynor can stabilize from this, yeah, he lost a bunch of workers, but he's basically, well, like 30-something workers ahead right now on his opponent, right? And that is a ton. It's just that all of these moves are incredibly efficient. Drones fighting an Archon right now? Oh my god, the Archon even got picked off there. Despite the fact that they're one of the worst units to be fighting Archons with, that just barely worked out there for the Italian Zerg player. Okay, great control here so far. Once again, beautiful force field as well, but at this point it's mostly just a bunch of freaking sentries fighting all of this. When the sentries and the zealots are the only thing that remains, the drones can be pulled a little bit more aggressively. Stalkers, though, apparently were hanging out over at the third base. I think there may be just barely enough for Neep to capitalize on this and break it. Is there, though? Oh, my God. What in the world? There it is. Massive warping. GG is cold. And Neep obtains the victory. So, with that, we find ourselves on the map Oxide. Now... I'm trying to think. Is the Mutalisk follow-up against Double Stargate viable so <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that previous game was kind of the perfect scenario for someone playing mutas after someone is going for a double stargate opener right i mean 
Radar did not go up against someone who was sticking around on more Void Rays. So Neep already transitioned away from all of those Void Rays, right? So that's obviously a first win for the Muta player, which you don't really know for sure. Secondly, he saved up 1500, 1500, and he made a Spire without his opponent realizing it, right? Then he produced the Mutas. Got 15 of those flippy flappies to the other side of the map before the opponent noticed, and then it still did not quite work out. Now, it could be, though, that Raynor played a little bit too greedily as a follow-up from there, so he decided to go straight into Hydras and straight into, like, 80 workers. Maybe if he would have stuck around on, like, Roaches for just a tad longer, and maybe if he would have made, you know, a couple less drones, he would have been fine. That being said, I, yeah, I love the idea of a Muta follow-up, but that seemed ridiculously greedy to me, and that was... What seemed to be the perfect follow-up, right? Now, brilliant move there as well by Neeblood, by the way. I think many Protoss players there would have just tried to chase around those Mutas with the Archons, right? Rather than going across the map. And Neeb, you know, he looked at the Mutas, he's like, okay, this is never gonna happen. I'm gonna go for the, uh, I'm gonna go for the counter-attack and try to deal with all of the units instead of my base with warp-ins and new units that I'm producing right now. Either way, let's see how this particular game is going to, uh continue right now all right so yeah ah. i want to love the muta follow-up but it's just i think it's much better against twilight openers and much better against robo openers it's just that those are not really that common i guess right now um so already the overlord is flying in a little bit closer so with this overlord usually you want to see roughly the direction that the adept will go in as well so it could technically be a Stalker as a follow-up, but at this level, like, the margins are very small. So once again, it's just going to be a good old Adept. Stargate probably as a follow-up again. Yep. It just makes the most sense. Already, Raynor probably knows that this is going to be a Stargate opener. Judged, or just by judging the Cybernetic score. So you can see on the Cybernetic score, the little lights glow and the little thingy spin. Alright, you see the difference there? Um, at this point, he sees the timing at which that starts. So even though that he, even though that he hasn't seen the actual Stargate itself, seeing that his opponent decided to delay the warp gate upgrade when they had the gas, seeing that it was gonna be an adept as the very first thing, and then seeing the timing at which point the upgrade did start up, this is already basically telling him, okay, this is gonna be a Stargate opener. And the reason for that is that the Twilight Council and the robotics facility are 100 gas each. So those are two potential follow-ups here for the Protoss player. However, the Stargate itself is 150 gas. Meaning that you have to squeeze out the 50 gas somewhere. And usually that's done by delaying that, uh, that Warp Gate upgrade. Either way, these Adepts, yeah, they're very annoying. So I like this a lot. I think this is one of the best follow-ups actually when you are a Protoss player. If you can block your opponent from taking that natural expansion right at the start. First off, I think that's a good move in the in the first place. I actually think it's very annoying. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's so annoying is exactly because of what Neve is doing over here. You know that your opponent is going to be forced to defend, you know, a third base and a main base. And committing the Zerklings without speed in either of those locations is tricky. Also love, though, what Neep has done over here. Those Adepts just went on a little bit of a walk. They got a couple kills, so three kills here in total, it seems, on these two. But now they're all the way back home defending the third base now. Uh, was that a... Yeah, okay. Maybe that was a tight squeeze. I was gonna say, maybe the Zerklings could have gotten a wrap around. It looks like these are not wall offs, right? But I guess they just barely are. Okay. Second Stargate. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, if you're a Protoss player, just, just copy-paste. Just, just play this build. You can see that there's a variety. Eh, you know what? Maybe this time around the Oracle can get some kills in. Spore is not done yet. Ah, it's almost done though. Void Ray over here trying to get a couple kills as well. You see why I'm calling this matchup a little bit more... A little bit more two-dimensional, you know? I mean, maybe the same can be said as well for Zerk versus Terran and all of the other matchups that are available because they usually look kind of similar. But Zerk versus Protoss is also just kind of slow in the first stages of the game, right? I mean, the most aggression we're going to see is a couple Zerklings going on over to the third base. Or like, you know, maybe a 12 pool, obviously. Or, or a couple of Adepts getting a, a couple kills here and there and then a, 
uh, you know, an oracle. We, we could just go hunting instead for, like, map critters, okay? We could channel our inner Bear grills or, like, David Attenborough or whatever, and look for critters on the map. Is there a critter? Are there any critters on this map, actually? Is this a map without any critters? I don't know. Are the critters even visible if you, uh, you know, like the little, little things that are crawling around, but are they visible through the fog of war? I think not. This map actually may not have any critters on it. Huh, I never considered that. Been casting this map for like half a year now. <laughs> I had no idea. Alright. Alright, a creep tumor is under attack. So once more, Lair is done. Aspire as a follow-up. I don't know if I like it. So... Raynor did scout right there the timing of the Robo facility. I don't really know exactly if this is how he's gauging that this is a good idea. Already though, I love this. Look at the follow-up here. We have the plus one arrow weapons for the Protal Slayer coming up. So that indicates to me that despite the fact that he's going for a Robo Bay right now, that he still wants to stick around on those air units for a little while longer. There's additional Void Rays. Void Rays and Disruptors? Void Rays and... Colossi? That makes no sense. Oh no, it's gonna be Void Rays and Disruptors. Ha! Huh. Anyway, so I was saying, right? I, I thought maybe Raynor knew the timing there of his opponent's Robo facility and therefore knew that it wasn't gonna be a follow-up here with, uh, with more Stargate units, but it appears that that is not even the case. Now you're making a, a Spire here into someone who's actually continuously making more Void Rays. Plus, they're going for the for the air weapon upgrades. I mean, I am very hesitant about this Spire play. So there, once again, do we have a bunch of Mutas coming up? It's going to be 12 this time around. I want to believe, but it really did not look that good in the previous game. Raynor, once again, though, follows this up very similar. What is going on here? Brenda and the crew apparently are shooting like shooting spines right here at a, at a bunch of rocks. Maybe this is going to be like a Muta push? Together with Queens and Roaches and Zerklings? Is that what we're looking at? The creep spread, by the way, is absurdly good. There's a lot of Queens. There's 13 Queens! Oh crap, this is gonna be like... I think this is gonna be Void Ray Disruptor going up against Queen Roach Muta. What in the world? This is like a development, I guess. Because these Queens can force the position there of all of those Void Rays, right? So that means the Mutas can flap into the main base relatively easily. He does need to get the Battery Overcharge done, I suppose, if he wants to defend this. That being said, the Queens can now force all of those units at the front. Disruptors, though, who are gonna force a couple Transfuses. Turns out Queens apparently can take one of those to the face. A couple probes, though, are already starting to fall, and this is a nice bit of damage here that, uh, that Raynor is dealing. So... There's no Hydra then here as a follow-up this time around. Man, this is crazy. So Phoenixes once again are being produced. Now, I'm trying to think, what if the creep spread would have been pushed back a little bit better there by Neep, right? What if we would have used the Oracle's Revelation ability to try and kill a couple of those tumors? This push would not have been viable, right? It seems like it's entirely enabled just because... <laughs> because of the creep highway. I mean, the queens can move off creep too, but then they can't go home. Hyper aggression right now from the Zerk player. Roaches and Raptors moving forward. Disruptors and uh, Void Rays though. Pretty good against those Roaches. Queens can obviously join in the fray again as well. Mutas are gonna try and see if they can kill the fourth. Fleet Beacon now is a follow-up. I love the Fleet Beacon for multiple reasons. First off, obviously, it unlocks Carriers and Tempests. And a Mothership as well, I suppose. But secondly, you can get the Anion Pulse Crystals, which is a ranged upgrade for those Phoenixes. So, yeah, if Raynor decided to double down on uh, on the Mutalisks, that would, have not have been a, uh, that would have not been a bad idea. Oh god, oh god, he decides to commit! <laughs> Raynor decides to commit there to try and jump on the Purification Novas before they detonate, but it's not gonna happen. At this point, Neep realizes... Oh god, okay. That uh, it's not gonna be more Mutas as a follow-up, so he doesn't need the Anion Pulse Crystals. He sees now that it's indeed gonna be Hydralisks instead. Gets a couple kills here. But, uh, 
upon seeing that he doesn't need that air upgrade for the phoenixes, he decides to go for the carriers. So third Stargate is going to finish up here very shortly. There's five Vipers now coming up, by the way. So Raynor, during all of this, got himself a, a very healthy amount of economy. He's going to actually go all the way up to like 90 drones here. So he'll probably, he'll probably follow this up with Spore Crawlers as well. Man, this feels like such a Zergy game so far. As someone who likes to play Zerg quite a bit myself, this looks incredibly hard. There's so many small things that can so easily go wrong here. But, uh... I can't imagine when it works well, it's gonna work really well. I'm still a little concerned though, because right now we are once more heading into what seems to be late game. Right? And... I wanna believe, but... Zerk late game seems to be a rather flimsy recently. Trying my best here to stay unbiased, okay, but... Protoss once again got the fourth base up. I, for the life of me, in straight-up games like this, cannot really win li like like late-game macro against against Skytals. Maybe it's gonna be viable though. Who knows? All right. So, ooh, couple miss rallies over here by Neblet. He's gonna end up losing a couple of those disruptors for free. Queen's now coming up as well. We see parasitic bombs being utilized on all of those Stargate units. Most of the Void Rays are starting to run dangerously low. The Queen's actually scramble on over towards this location as well. They transfuse whatever they can. Phoenixes swoop in, pick up whatever they can as well. Keep in mind, these Protoss units already have some decent upgrades. Corruptors now is a follow-up though. So once all of those Void Rays come out, or, or are down rather to the ground, uh, the Void Rays that are coming out... Or sorry, the Corruptors that are coming out, Rotter. Should be able to kill everything that is in a Void Ray. There you go. Got the sentence right the 17th time around. Very nice. Alright, a couple more Interceptor ships apparently get suicided in. It feels to me like Raynor is heavily outplaying Neep so far in this game. But I'm, st <laughs> I'm still concerned. Because Neep is getting awfully close to uh, being maxed out. He's got four bases, which is all he really needs. Or all he really needs. Haha! <laughs> Look, you're so funny, everyone. Thanks, guys. Um, no, but he's got four Nexi, right? He can make a big army. Mothership is just about to be out as well. But here come the Corruptors to get away. Ooh, whatever else uh, the Zerg player has, apparently. There's the abductions. Very nice. Harpooning one of those carriers down already. Queens are underneath though, trying to get some damage done as well. Parasitic Bomb once again forces all of those Void Rays to split. Vipers decide to go back home as the Corruptors right now are going forward. Finally, we do see a good Disruptor hit. But my god, is this a lot of Zerg. I don't actually know if there's going to be enough right now for the Protoss player to hold on. Static Defense is helping out here as well, but most of the Interceptor ships at this point have been picked off. Hydras are added into the mix as well. There is detection available for now here for the Zerg player, so that one uh, Overseer is super critical. Mothership is starting to take some damage, and I think actually that Raynor is breaking through this, but just barely. What a game. I... <laughs> I really think that this is jerk bias, man, but it feels like the Raynor has to try so freaking hard to, to win a game like this, despite being really far ahead here for quite some time. Alright. Yeah, the Vipers are so critical. Oh, the Vipers are good. So if you abduct one of those Disruptors, right? There it is, by the way. But if you abduct the Disruptor while it's using purification, uh, purification Nova, the Purification Nova gets cancelled, which is why we see Raynor doing that here all the time. Awesome match. Alrighty, and that brings us to good old Jaganatha. Jaganatha. The Jag. I've actually gotten pretty good at pronouncing this map name. Remember when it first was added to the map pool and I was just complaining all the time that I didn't know how to pronounce it? I've just, uh, I've just settled on Jaganatha. Which I think is the correct pronunciation, but at this point... I mean, I'm not gonna change it anymore. At this point, nobody really knows, okay? So if you Google the meaning of Giganatha, you'll find out as well that it has absolutely nothing to do with video games. So I... <laughs> I still don't know why we have a map called Giganatha. Still think it's a horrible map, okay? It's awful. I hate it. Anyway, well, the, the map name that is. The map design is pretty good. So once again, we have Neblet sending out a probe really early on. This is a small move, man, but I highly recommend you do it as a Protoss. Just force them to go for the third. Make their lives a little bit difficult. Are there critters on this map? 
There have to be critters here somewhere, right? I actually have never really paid attention to this, but is it common for map makers to not put any of those little creatures on the map? If I made a map, I would fill them up everywhere, you know? Just put all those Ursa Dongs or Ursa Dicks or whatever they're called. <laughs> it's definitely not Ursa Dick, Loco. Uh, <laughs> put the Ursa Dicks all over the map. Oh well, Ursa Dick Alley. That would make for a much better map name, okay? They're all called Richard is what I'm trying to say. Uh, right, what was it saying? But is it is it popular to just not have a map without uh, with, with no critters? That's kind of lame. Okay. So, shall we play the game on whether or not it's going to be a Stargate opener or not? This is going to be uh a bit of a surprise, I think, guys. But I'm gonna put my money on a Stargate opener once again. I think the odds are pretty good. We'll find out here in just a minute, guys. Will he start up the Warp Gate upgrade right away? Oh, oh here it is. Adept starts up, but no Warp Gate upgrade. Chrono Boost on the Adept. Zerk sees this, though. And I think that once more... It's gonna be a Stargate. Wow! Such variety. I almost feel... And maybe you disagree. I almost feel like fast-forwarding a little bit throughout these games. Because we are quite literally seeing the same thing every game so far. This time around, we have one pesky Zerkling that made its way across. But the Adept this time around did not actually commit to a shade. So, it's gonna be picked off. Doesn't matter though. Raynor at this point already can put one on one together, right? He he assumes at this point that it's gonna be a Stargate. And really the only response that this is gonna force out of the Zerk player is to go for additional queens. And there's never been a Zerk player that's like, oh no, I need to make an extra queen. <laughs> oh no, please tell me it is not so. Right? Like queens are amazing, we all know it. We'll probably start up a fourth one here shortly as well. And uh, that will keep him safe against any hypothetical Stargate that he may be going up against. So we should be seeing the third base here coming up for the Protoss player relatively quick as well. Maybe there's going to be a variation. Void Ray into Oracle. Okay. Void Ray is going to head on over to the third. And with that, the probe is going to head on over to the third base as well. A couple Zerklings are running across. There's no wildlife on this planet, man. Even though it's nice and overgrown already. I see grass and palm trees and stuff. Or, well, actually does... Well... There's a bunch of trees. Why, why are there like squirrels or something? Or Ursa dicks? <laughs> Ursa dots. Urs Ursas. Look at all the tall grass. You, you should find at least three Pokemon over here. Let me sing a guitar solo for you. You know what's crazy to me? That his Oracle is getting two kills. No, you know what's crazy to me? That like up to like 100,000 people watch these videos and I'm feeling pretty comfortable just making really bad jokes and making really bad attempts at singing along with songs. If you guys would all be sitting right in front of me, like when you think about it, right? Up to like 100,000 people, that's like two stadiums full. That's insane. And you guys willingly actually, like, clicked on this video and decided to watch it. That's pretty bananas, man. Hey, thanks. Appreciate you. While I have you here, might I interest you in smashing the like button? Or if you're not really into smashing the like button, could you gently caress this <laughs> the like button down below? I would much appreciate it, okay? You can hit this like button as well, that's fine. I don't really mind. But just interact with the video in any way, okay? YouTube likes it that way. Just gently caress this, the like or the dislike button. It's, 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 all, it's all fine. Hey, also, by the way, I was notified yesterday on stream. Which, by the way, I, I stream Monday through Saturday. Usually between 2 to 8 p.m. Central European time. Uh, over at twitch.tv slash locotv. But I was notified yesterday that a lot of people have no idea that I have a second YouTube channel. In case you're unfamiliar, if you go to youtube.com slash moreloco. There's a link in, in like every single video description of mine. But if you go to youtube.com slash moreloco. There is 
another YouTube channel where I complete or I, I post rather completed playthroughs of games that I've streamed on Twitch. So you know, if you like other video games, that's StarCraft. If you're not a purist, you should probably go check it out. Now, this may come as a crazy surprise to you, but there is a lot of gateways as a follow-up together with charge. This time around, though, no second Stargate. So, this indicates to me that Neeb really wants to hit his opponent in the face, right? He's bringing a baseball bat. He's got to bring a prism here as well. He's adding on eight additional freaking gateways, a bunch of additional pylons. This is going to put him up to ten gates. Ten gateways in total. He's adding on seven more pylons. All right. This is Neeblitz saying, okay, if you are feeling cheeky once again and you decide to go for that Buda opener one more time, you are dead. D-A-D, -D -D wait, no, D-E-A-D, -E dead. Oh, I love this little move actually from Neeb, pretending to go for a fourth base. He's not going for a fourth, is he? No way. What? Huh? But, but like 10 gate, huh? Okay, he's just gonna... Why 10 gateways? And then a fourth. And seven pylons. Maybe, oh, you know what he's trying to do? I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to bait out the Zerg. Neep really is the master at baiting. What a legend. Yeah, he's forcing this Zerg player off creep. He's like, come into my base. Now, it's going to be Hydrolink Bania from the Zerk, by the way. Not a very common follow-up. Here's what you can do when you have 10 gateways with Zealots. You can warp into the main base of the opponent. Void Ray is going to get picked off. And maybe the Prism. You don't want to lose the Prism here. Now, there is a second one, obviously. But losing anything over here is a bit of a meme. Don't really need that. One of the Archons sadly gets stuck behind his brother. And so far, the defense looks clean. I thought that this was going to be a bit of an issue here from... Uh, from Raynor. But it looks like things are okay. Now, I love this. Warped in a couple centuries as well to just get a few force fields off, right? You guys stay down there. If you don't go roaches and ravagers, that's fine. He even decided to skip the roach warren entirely. So this is Raynor playing relatively greedily, right? Trying to get value in the units that he's got. But so far, yeah, it's not really going so, so great. So the Hydra finishes off the prism. Protos always still has to get out of out of jail for free card though, right? They can always recall and out of here, which is not a not a bad idea. At the same time, we do see some units now killing the fourth base as well. Fourth base is gone. Is he gonna recall? I don't think you want to lose all of those units for free. What? Ah, oh, come on, come on, bro. You could just recall. Anyways, he got himself the kill on the fourth base. And even though usually Hydrolink Bane is really quite good against these kind of follow-ups, Raynor is taking a lot of damage. Hmm. I wonder if that final little move there was a bit of overextension there. Honestly, I don't understand why he didn't recall out earlier. He knew he was going to lose those units, and then, like, there was, like, I don't know, a good couple thousand resources there that got donated as well. I think Neep could have actually followed it up a little bit more cleanly. He gave away pretty much everything he had there for no apparent reason. Like, where are you going to go from here? Go to, uh, Maybe he tried to, like, overwhelm the opponent. Probably anticipated there to be a little bit less of a Hydra Ball. Now, Hydraling Bane has been a popular unit composition for a very long time. The problem is that both Hydras and Banelings got nerfed, right? And those are, like, kind of like the two keys <laughs> in that unit composition. So I'm a little bit... Yeah, yeah. It's what I'm trying to say is that it's not it's not nearly as good as it once uh, as it once was. Lurkers now once more here as a follow up from Raynor. Okay. High Templar actually coming out. Is this is the first time we're seeing Sonic Storm research this series. I think so. Don't give away another army. Hello. Why? Ah, storms are pretty good. Never mind. I thought that this was going to go really poorly here for the Protoss. Good splits, though, here so far. Wasn't the entirety of the Zerk army, though. So you never really know exactly as a Protoss player where all of those units are. This push also slightly out of sync here with this push over here. It's... Eh. He was waiting, I guess, for an additional warp in. 
Zork units, though, are going to be scrambling back on over to the third base location. Neeplet is going to start target firing that one down, and I do really like that. Yeah, nice. So, right now, we're, th uh, we're talking about a, um, a Protoss player that's four bases against a Zerg player that's three. And usually one of the advantages of going like for the Hydrolink Bane style is that you don't really die. Now, obviously, Lurkers are even better at that, right? Lurkers make it very difficult for the Protoss player to actually finish the Zerg off. But at this point, look at this. This is the janitor crew right now. They're just dedicated to cleaning up the creep. Fifth base being acquired at the 3 o'clock position. Yeah, Rainer doesn't see it. He just sees that his opponent is still stepping on a creep. The problem is, Hydrolink Bane is really good still if you have like 90 workers, right? When you are, econ uh, when you are economically behind though, it's just... Yeah, no. Lurkers sure can be really good. But they can't shoot up, right? So already we have a couple Stargates coming up as well as a Fleet Beacon. So, once more, I mean, Neep right now is looking at this, he's like, okay, I've got five bases, I know you're on three. I know I can't really go kill your ground army very easily, but what I can do is make flying units that you can't hit. Right? And at this point, like, Raynor is in no position to switch on over to a, uh, a Spire. Right? I mean, he can try and get one, but it's gonna be very expensive. He needs to rebuild first off, so... If you're going up against... Yeah, if you're going up against Skytles right now with Selnic Storm, Hydras aren't gonna cut it, man. Hydras and Lurkers can cut it, I suppose, but here's the first couple carriers. Now, carriers do take about seven and a half years to produce, so they're not going to be out yet. One Arcode over here, apparently. Feeling badass. Zealot's going in for the run-by. Warp in inside of the main base once again. Love this. That base will once more get picked off, and this is going to secure Neep's advantage even more. Couple units inside of the main base. Zerklings will not trade very well here against the Zealots either. Luckily, the Hydras and a Bane Link decide to join in. Couple probes ended up getting killed there as well by a few Zerklings, but luckily, there for Neep, he did make some static defense. Now, Neep could wait until he's got the Stargate units out, but even though he's got like a lot of supply caught up in those Stargate units right now, he is playing like really aggressively, man. Even though he's got a lot of units uh, still on the production tab at this point. Ah, here come the Bane Links. Oh, sorry. Here come the Bane Links. Also, they will not get anything done. <laughs> that was sloppy. <laughs> yeah, this is this is not good at all for Raynor. Pretty sure that this is game over, right? I mean, he's got... Let me see. 11 Hydralisks. There are four High Templar with Storms and then three Carriers available right now. Plus, obviously, Charge Slots. Surprise! Here's the capital ships! GG. Okay, and that brings us to the final map in today's Best of Five series, and that will take place on Pillars of Gold. Alrighty. Double Stargate openers. Pretty good. Apparently not mandatory, though. So, the expectations in the StarCraft community, by the way, for those of you wondering, um, are that after I am Karavitsa, which takes place at the end of February, which is, you know, if you're watching this close to the video going live, it's like next week. After I am Karavitsa, which is the biggest tournament of the year, um, people are expecting to do... Uh, people are expecting there to be, like, some balance updates. So, a couple changes here and there. I don't really know exactly what to expect from it either. Um, at least, like... It seems that most people are expecting that, myself included as well, because things are starting to get a little bit, a little bit plain, right? I mean, especially in these, um, in these macro games, we've just seen the same build or, or a variation of the same build, you know, nine times out of ten. And it would be fun to have just a bit more variety. Even if, even if there wouldn't be any, any, any balance updates or any significant overhauls. Um, Blizzard did say as well when they, uh, retired StarCraft 2, essentially. What? Is that a forge? Is he gonna- what? A forge? Oh, it's Nexus first. Oh, okay, I was looking at this for a second, I'm like, wait a second. Did he just go for a forge and then follow it up? No. What? No! Can I rush? 
Anyways, they did say that they were gonna make new maps and stuff. So new maps obviously can change the balance a lot in the game as well. New balancer or new maps are actually very critical. So wait, what? Is he actually gonna? So normally, I would say counter rushing your opponent's third base is not a good idea. This, however, is an extremely quick nexus. So it's not really that big of a commitment because already, I mean, at this point, Raider sees everything as well. There's a cyber core as a follow up. I guess it's only like a little bit of lost mining time there on the probe, then two photon cannons and a and a and, and a pylon. Ay 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 ay! That's a dirty one, Eve. Nexus first into cannon rush. It's about as greedy as can be. Can I can I go back just a little bit? So I'm mostly curious here to see exactly what the Protoss player did. So he sent out a probe very early on, saw that his opponent decided to go for a hatchery first, and then planted down the Nexus. I'm just a little concerned here, because this probe arrives right now, and it seems to be that Neep did not have any intention at all to go for a, uh, a gateway on the low ground. I'm just thinking right now, if this would have been a 12th pool, right? Which is still a very popular build. This would have just been, you know, game over, right? Because then the probe would have to be sent to the low ground right now. And I guess considering there's a ramp going up over here, 12 pools are not very popular, but... <sighs> bit of a gamble there, Neep. Anyhow, back to the present moment. The Zealot decides to complete the wall off. And we do now have a Photon Cannon finishing up. Now, normally, you need an Adept as a follow-up here right away, right? But I guess the Photon Cannon kind of serves the same uh, serves the same purpose. Rainer's trying to see if he can potentially finish off the Pylon. And, and I guess eventually he will indeed unpower all of this. But that base is super dead. Nice targeting over there. But sadly there for Niblet. He did not quite get the kill. Oh. There seems to be one location where he might be able to hit the pylon, but it's difficult to uh, gauge exactly where that's going to be. Now, once more, it's got to be a Stargate! Who would have guessed, huh? Who would have guessed? Who's surprised? Radar at this point sees that the second pylon finishes up rather late inside of the main base. The reason for that is that it's a Nexus first. So because of that, he knows that it's likely going to be attached to text structure that is to the first pylon that the Protoss player went for. And ta-da! He sees that it's a Stargate. Isn't that a surprise? Okay, so this is now a bit bit of a different game though. So we have a spine crawler finishing up over here. The spine crawler obviously is going to be here to uh, to get rid of this uh, of this pylon, right? And then once it's done poking away at the pylon, you can retake the third base once more. The only problem is that Reyna, for the time being, is going to be sitting here on a two-base eco for quite some time. Hmm. I'm hesitant to call this an advantage here for Neep. Because, yeah, I mean, Zerk is obviously halted here a little bit, right? And they're going to be slightly stunted here in their, in their development. But it's really not going to be that big of a deal. So this is 300 minerals, obviously, plus the cost of the pylon, that's 400 minerals. At the cost of the drone that built the hatchery, and then also the hatchery itself, which is 350 minerals in total, right? So, despite the fact that it looks like this is a significant advantage here for Neep, I don't think you want to get too carried away, because it's relatively small. That's what she said. Wait, no. <laughs> Wait, no. Oracle now is a follow-up here as well, so I like it. Once again, Void Rain to Oracle. We've seen this out of every single game that Neve has played so far. Lair comes up at the conventional timing as well. He'll just continue droning here for a bit longer. He's gonna be forced to oversaturate the third, I guess, temporarily. But, I mean, yeah. We're sorry, not oversaturated. I guess long distance mining and, uh, mine it here instead. Evo Chamber is done, Roach Warren's coming up as well. I wonder how viable it is at the pro level to go double Evo. We haven't really seen anyone go double Evo recently. I've been playing a lot of D double Evo myself in my games. Now, I play a little bit below the pro level, obviously. Only, only like a couple thousand MMR. Um, 
but still win in GM, right? So it's still in, in Grandmaster League, and double Evo seems to certainly create more sustain, but it's expensive, so I don't know. Okay, ooh, ooh, okay. So there's a couple follow-ups. We talked about it earlier. We talked about the Hydroden follow-up. We talked about the Spire follow-up. We talked about the Queen Push follow-up. We did not yet talk about the Swarm Host follow-up, and I think that this is what that is. Alternatively, Raynor could go straight into Hive, and then, yeah, make a Viper, maybe? I think Swarm Hosts, definitely together with a Nidus network, work together really nicely. Fourth base is coming up. I think this has to be Swarm Hosts. Raynor's got a lot of gas saved up. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So a bunch of Swarm Hosts start up right away. We haven't seen any Nidus Worms yet. So without a Nidus Network, this actually becomes rather tricky to pull off. Although, I guess... Ooh, nice scout over there. I guess if you have enough... Um, enough creep spread, you can maneuver around relatively easily. So, Neep did just now see the timing there of the Twilight Council... Or, sorry, not of the Twilight Council, of the Infestation Pit. So already he starts up a bit of a wall over here, which I like. It all comes down to playing Whack-A-Mole with the first Worm. If you can delay the first Nidus Worm, that's really good. But I think Raynor is not intending on going for the Worm here in the first place, which makes this kind of strange. Queen Swarm Host push? Is that what we're looking at here? Because there's more Queens coming up. Queen Swarm Host? What the? Queen Swarm Host? This is something I've not considered. So, there's roaches now coming as a follow-up as well. The queens obviously can hit these void rays in the air. Queen swarm host. It makes sense. It's just kind of risky if your opponent just has a bunch of units. Now, there is a stasis ward over here, which I love. Raynor has a hard time spotting that. Aw, oh, bro, that was a beautiful stasis there. Neep once again baiting his opponent into that. And that's a good defense. Now those things will just time out. So here's the thing about Swarm Hosts. Protosses will have a much easier time defending Swarm Hosts when they're sitting around 100 army supply. So currently there's 66 here for Neep. You want to grow here as a Protoss player. Well, if you can take some good traits, obviously, that's very good as well. But you ideally want to grow to like 100 army supply or so, which is very, very helpful. Once you get there, a lot of these units will be easily negated. Now, at the same time, there's a big locust wave that looks like heading towards the main base of the Protoss player, but already Zealots are inside of the main base of the Zerg too. So here we go. Oh my god, is it going to be an eye for an eye? Oh, it is! That's a hatchery for a Nexus. Now, this is a really nice catch, though. My Neep, when they're not safely inside of the worm... Okay, Sentry's going in for the flank. Uh, um, oh, well, it, it, yeah, it works. Uh, when they're not safely inside of the worm, they can get picked off very easily. Hmm. An eye for an eye. A Nexus for a hatch. Or, I guess, a lair, technically. Yeah, it was a lair, I think. So... There is certainly something to be said for stamina, right? And you can see that both players here may just be getting ever so slightly tired after playing this relatively long series. Because I don't think Raynor was supposed to lose the main base, and I don't think Neep was either. Losing all of those swarm hosts, though, was... Uh... Hmm. Losing all of those swarm hosts was kind of sloppy, right? I wonder if you just go back to swarm hosts, but maybe not. Yeah, Proto's still sitting at a reasonably low amount of army, but it's growing. See it right here at the bottom. 84 right now. Good force fields there once again by the Proto's player. Bunch of uh, Immortals there in the back. I mean, Archons and Immortals together with shield batteries. You're not going to break that, are you? Well, maybe you are. Not a lot of force fields actually remain. Queens once again pulled to the front as well. Plus two missile starts up. Oh. That fourth base actually just barely stays alive. Who would have guessed 10 years ago that Queens would be leading the offensive in so many of those Zerk attacks? Isn't that crazy? This is why the bigger maps don't seem to be that good. Already, 
roaches are waiting for these zealots. This is something that uh, Neep has been doing the whole game long, so I like this a lot, leaving a couple roaches behind here for the defense. That does mean, obviously, that they're not at the front. Is there going to be enough right now for the Protoss player to push back all of these Roaches and Ravagers? I mean, it's mostly Ravagers, I guess. Yeah, 14 Ravagers over here. Nexus, or sorry, Hatchery once again gets killed. But obviously, this time around, we also saw the Nexus getting killed on the other side. So, once again, it's a base for a base. And when you're the one with a base up, that is obviously going to be an advantage here for Zerg. That said, Raynor is maxed right now. He's got himself a, uh, a good amount of, uh, of army. But this Protoss army is going to continue growing, right? Whereas the Zerk army can. So I think that's one of the reasons why we see him desperately pushing down this ramp here all the time. I'm not a massive fan because these pushes can just go so poorly. Oh, these are such valuable traits here for the, for the Protoss. Right? Yeah, Zerk is just losing a lot more stuff. I'm just thinking though if those Swarmos would have been alive here. Hmm. I do really like these pushes, though, with the Swarm Hosts. I think they're really strong. Especially with Nidus Worms. Even against double Stargate openers, they're still really good. So Queen Roach Ravager, man. That should be the bread and butter of any Zerg style, it seems. For Protoss, it's gonna be either Void Race or Archon Immortal Zealot. With sentries, of course. Don't forget about the sentries. Roaches moving around the fourth base once again. This is actually a very difficult fourth base to acquire, right? The alternative is all the way in the top left-hand corner, but Zerg has a lot more mobility here. Which is why I do like those Void Ray openers, right? Because the Void Rays really do allow you to go around the map quite nicely. Reyno right now, splitting up his army. Couple other Protoss units though are coming back over here, so maybe this can deal some damage. Ooh, good force... Oh god, okay. Well, good force fields, but also certainly good corrosive piles. A lot of that connected. Roaches ran away. Fourth base looks like it's gonna finish here eventually. Neep just trying to grow, right? Raynor trying to make sure that Neep does not grow. He's hitting every single time that he's close to being maxed out, which is basically all of the time. He's got himself a fifth base done right now as well on the left side of the map. Like the 9 o'clock position. He's looking to break through this, but these are difficult pushes to make. Now he needs... Okay, he's gonna start popping one of those Immortals at a time, it seems. Although, okay, the Corrosive Balls barely connect there at the end. Good Force Fields once again coming up right here from Neep. Neep trying to see if he can break through this. This is a very close battle. Fourth Nexus right now has been acquired by Neep. Raynor's plan was to try and break through that and prevent this from ever happening. Right now, shield batteries are going to come up. Stasis wards are going to be coming up as well. If Neep can hold on for a little while longer, he should be okay. Once again, very good force fields. Slices off part of the Zerg army. Corrosive balls, therefore, are forced on those force fields as well. That means they're not going to be on the units. All of these Immortals, though, yeah, they seem to be battered and bruised, other than the one over here on the left. Zealot's going in for a run-by once again. There's that spine crawler that we saw finishing up uh, the Photon Cannons at the beginning of the game. And this is actually now triggering most of the Zerg army to retreat, and that's exactly what Neve is looking for. Okay. Robotics facility, second one, as well as a Robo Bay. It's time to go for the Disruptors, I think. You gotta be careful though, Neep. You cannot stand on the creep. Oh god, do not split up your units, my man! Oh god, that's a misplay. That's two Immortals going down for free. Couple sentries get picked off for free as well. I don't know why in the world Neep was eating lunch right there on the creep. Yeah, okay, so Raynor's like, okay, I was gonna give you the fourth base, but now I can maybe continue pushing once again. He's got himself the Hive coming up. Where is it? Oh, over at the third base. So obviously he's gonna go for Vipers here as a follow-up. It's the most logical approach. Batteries are done, though. Imagine if this was a wide-open choke, right? Zerk would have just waltzed all over this Protoss. Man, Nipa's given away a lot of units here. The thing is, obviously, Zerk has as well, but these are easier to replace because they're much cheaper. Roach is running over to the fourth, but I like that. Stasis Ward over there. Good micro door here from both sides. Nicely done here by Neve. Keeps a lot of those big boys alive. Alright. A few roaches apparently decide to get adventurous, head on over towards the natural expansion. Why is there no observer here? He's got an observer somewhere. Where is it? Eh, I clicked on it on my camera. Oh, it's right. <laughs> it's right there, guys. It's cloaked, okay? I couldn't see it. Don't blame me. 
Yeah, this creep spread over here needs to be gone. Disruptor! Okay. Just rallied in. Okay. I mean, his force fields are phenomenal, but some of the unit positioning is a little bit shaky. A couple probes end up getting killed here as well by the two roaches that just li literally walked into the main base. Battery overcharge, though. Not necessary, apparently. Keeps uh, at least one of those immortals alive for now. Disruptor. Okay. Zerk is trying to break through this, and now he's getting on top of all of those immortals. He's trying to pick them off one by one, and I think he's managing to do so. Battery overcharge being utilized once again. Here's another purification nova, though. Rolling forward. Nice connection there for Nibblet. Grabs three of those Ravagers. And with the immortals now, uh... Ah, uh, no longer protected, actually, by the shield batteries. I, I was gonna say, like, maybe the Immortals are gonna be able to push this back, but I'm looking at this, and Raynor is smelling blood in the water. This is an extremely scrappy battle that's been going on for, like, the better part of the last seven minutes, I think. He's trying to pick off as many of those Immortals as he can, and once the Immortals are gone, the Roaches can just overwhelm everything else. There is another Immortal getting picked off. Neep has been happily producing Disruptors. Reasonably good splits there, right there, though, by, um, by Raynor, and he keeps a lot of this alive. Now, all of a sudden, we can see the supplies plummet, right? Despite the fact that Neep still has a good economy, Raynor has been relentless with his aggression. He wants to win this game right here, right now. He does not want this game to go the distance, and for good reason. One good Disruptor hit could obviously still change the tide of battle. These are good hits every single time. Archons, though. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Massive hit. Archons, though, are obviously now the weapon of choice, even though... And even though Nipla just got a massive hit in on his opponents, Roaches and Ravagers, it's just barely not going to be enough. Whew! That was a nail-biter of a series. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, hit that like button down below, and if you want to see more, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. Thank you very much for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.